Hi, good morning. Welcome to Bible class here on Sunday, the 17th of May. We're really flying through these months, uh, if time has any meaning. I hope you've had a really good week. Uh, my week has been up and down because it sort of goes like that anyway. And, uh, and I'm actually really looking forward to the family service later on. What about you? How's your week been? Down and up. Down and up? Yep. Okay, that's Down good. And um, yeah, it's gone quite quickly this week. Are we done eight weeks now? I've no weeks idea. Shut in lockdown quarantine, I think. It's over 50 days. I know that much. Because... Yes, but that was at the start of the week. We hit day 50, so that would be like seven and Fif- a bit. 57 weeks. weeks. 57 no, days. No, So now we've gone to... No, it can't be. 56. Seven eights are 56. Okay. There's so, the mass. It, maybe eight weeks. And that's me told off for my mass. That's you told off. Thank you. Right. We have some news. Okay. Here's the news. All that's new and approved. I still haven't heard back from Boris. But it's okay. I will forgive him. I got my hair cut. I got my hair cut. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, I know. Just that just that wee bit at the back and that wee bit there at the back. I know you're all terribly worried, but... Yes, it was Mark good. Great. Mark didn't cut it. No, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't him. Uh, it wasn't it was Scooby. Scooby job. for scissors. It was a very good job. My hairdresser was very nice and didn't even charge. She did a great job. Charlotte did. She probably didn't know to charge. No, we shouldn't have told her that. That's true. She'll never see this. <laughs> um, You've been upcycling? In the garden. Okay, when we mean upcycling, I don't mean exercise. Uh, yeah, I, I've got a pallet that we had lying about for a while, and I was able to make it into my uh, lettuce holder. So mm. put it onto a fence so the slugs don't climb up and eat my lettuce. I haven't grown lettuce in years because the slugs around here are so bad. They're and really you big. reused the old fence that blew down before and Christmas. And you reused the old fence. To cover up the other fence on the other side, which was quite ugly looking. So, yeah. Just because you can't get to dump with rubbish, then you upcycle it. Yeah, use it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Last Saturday, um, we were sitting watching a movie. I can't remember what it was. Last what Saturday's was movie we was watch a movie Princess every Bride. Saturday night. The Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Excellent. Oh, yes. And then in the middle of it... Inconceivable. Shush. In the middle of it, the Tesco man arrived. Lovely, friendly Tesco man. He's been here before and brought us lots of food for the food bank. And in the middle of him arriving, someone else arrived who watches Bible class every week and brought us a lovely bunch of flowers, some chocolate and a lovely letter, which they'd written to encourage us. So it was very nice. So thank you very, very much. Very confusing because I think the girls thought the Tesco man had brought flowers. But no, it wasn't him. This. Yeah, uh, we're going to try it. We're going to try it at last this week on Tuesday evening. We're going to try a Bible class Zoom. I have never Zoomed. You've never Zoomed. I've Zoomed a couple of times now. I've done a couple of Zooms where I've been in charge. It's quite interesting. Uh, I know uh, Kenneth has uh, Zoomed every week with the midweek. So we're going to try it as a Bible class uh, this Tuesday evening at, what time did we say? Was it 7 o'clock? Yeah. We're, yeah. going to, we're going to try it at 7 o'clock. Seven now, o'clock. Julie did put up something on the Facebook page. I did a poll. Bible class, I've never a poll. done that before. Thank you for both of you for <laughs> saying something. Oh, no, bless. The first person to vote was a very important person. Wasn't me, was it? No, it was Kenneth. Oh, Kenneth. He, he voted. He voted. Thank you. And thank you to Matthew and Cara and Charlotte for uh, voting on that. But we invite all the Bible class to that. We're going to put up details later on on the Bible class Facebook page. But what you will have to do is get your parents to uh, send or send us your parents' email address. And through that, we will send the invite for the Zoom meeting, the Zoom Bible do you, class. Do you need my mum's email? I'm not sure well, she wouldn't know what to do. Well, it's more for those that are under 18 for child okay. protection purposes. So we know the parents know that you are uh, are on that. And we'd like your parents to have a wave in during the Zoom meeting. Oh. And you can have your wee brothers or sisters. Do, do let people know that this is happening. The Bible class ones know because some of them we haven't had any contact with. Um, a, a few of them had contact with last week. That was brilliant. Thank you very much for the likes uh, that we know you're there. But uh, do let us know if you want to join in the Zoom meeting. 
and it'll be uh, uh, saying hello. Well, actually, Zoom meetings, the first 15 minutes are traditionally kept for trying to get people onto the Zoom because everybody presses the wrong thing. Turn up your mic. We don't want to see the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. blah, well, blah, blah. even how to get on. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, also, we'll be saying hello, That'll having a wee me. chat, and then we'll play a game. And uh, if you are, in fact, if <coughs> if you there's more than one of you in the house, go uh, through the same screen. Don't have a, a screen each, oh, yeah, a share. device each. Share. Because so that's Joe and Eve share, and Cara and Ella share. And the patterns. And three patterns share. Yeah. You'll have to really so, squash it. Because the game will be, there'll be a bit of running about for the game, and we don't want you running into each other. You'll have to take turns anyway. And Charlotte anyway. and Catherine share. And Charlotte and Catherine share. That'll be... That'll be interesting. Yes. Uh, I was going to say something else. I don't know what you're going to say. Oh, I made an effort today. I put in earrings. Oh. Ah, do you want to see my earrings? I had awful trouble getting them in. Let me see my earrings. I hold them up here. Mm -hmm. Look. Got for my birthday. My pie oh, yes. earrings. I haven't been out anywhere fancy to wear them, so... <laughs> yeah, because we always went fancy places before Yeah, that. so I wear my rings yeah. uh, every fancy. Right, uh, uh, that's Yes, it, have you I got think... a tip? We oh, haven't had any yeah. tips in. Nobody's sent us any tips. We discussed tips at tea time one night and somebody said something and I can't remember what it was. I have no tips for this no, week. No tips for this week. Will I have to make one up on the spot? Yes. Right. I will think when you make one up. Right. Um, when you get your hair cut... It doesn't matter because your hair will grow out. Okay? If it's a real hash, it'll grow out. Hair's fine. Hair always grows out. Ears, not so much, but hair always grows back. Okay. Okay, maybe not always. I'm just thinking the, the glare from the screen. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't. <laughs> okay. Mm. Right. Shall we go? Right, we will go. First Peter, chapter 3, we are got to. There are five verses in First Peter. Mm. I don't know if we're going to go on to Second five Peter. Five verses. Can... Five chapters in First Peter. Aye, that too. Five chapters. I don't know if we're going to go on to Second Peter. It depends how this long this thing all lasts. So anyway, we're on chapter three. We're going to do the first twelve verses today. Will I read them? Uh, if you read them, do you want to read from this one? Aye, I'll read yeah. from this. I have two Bibles now. Okay. So First Peter. Chapter 3, you should have it marked in your Bible by your now, with your re ribbon or a slice of toast, and starting at verse 1 of chapter 3 of First Peter. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behaviour of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewellery or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfailing beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called, her, called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as a weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Scooby. Uh, thank you, Scooby, for, uh, for agreeing. That's him going, preach it, brother. I, I let him uh, you, you let him out and I'll talk to the people. Uh, we struggled a bit with these verses. Uh, none of us... Uh, well, I might cut this bit out. Because I'm crawling in. <sighs> we've, right. we've just dealt with the dog, put him out. Uh, we struggled a bit with these verses uh, because as far as we know, none of you in the Bible class have got married over the past few weeks. 
Uh, but if you have, congratulations. Hey. <coughs> uh, so how are these verses relevant to you today? So you're going to have to use your imagination a bit. Um, you'll have to imagine yourself in about 10 or 20 years' time. That's very, that's very um, I don't know what the word is. Scary, because 10 years' time will be like the year 2030, and you think that's space age you know. Uh, I, I used to read a comic book called 2000 AD, and there used to be a thing in the letters page. What are you going to call yourselves when it gets to the year 2000? Oh, we'll be long gone by then. It's still going. Always it's still called books. 2000 AD. Always comic books. They weren't born in the year 2000. They, they weren't. Arthur C. Clarke had 2001 A Space Odyssey, and that used to think it was way in the future. And then 20 years is the year 2040. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. We watched Hitchhiker's Guide, or no, not Hitchhiker's Guide, uh, Back to the Future the other week as our Saturday night family movie night. If you have any movies uh, that are really good, that would be recommendations. Anyway, the second part of that was set in 2015, and it's so far in the future that we had flying cars and all that. Anyway, anyway, were you saying something? Yes, imagine yourself in 10 or 20 years' time, so you have to use your imagination. You might possibly be married, or thinking about getting married, or thinking about boy-girl relationships. I know some of you are going, Ugh. some of you are going, hmm. But don't fast forward or turn us off just yet. As if they would. As if they would. No, they haven't caught that one yet. No. First one to seven is all about husbands, how husbands and wives treat each other. Being respectful, considerate, showing them God's love by what they do. Not necessarily by what they say. Young people, you all have a husband-wife example in front of you in home. Your mum and dad. And parents, in these lockdown days, you get to come to Bible class too. A weed word for us parents. Do we treat our husband or wife in this way? Are we respectful and considerate all the time? Do we show God's love by what we do? But also for everyone, think beyond the marriage, the boy-girl relationships thing. How do we treat people? Verse 3 to 4 says, Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewellery or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. I felt a bit bad now, my earrings. Anyway, do we judge other people by what they look like? Uh, the clothes, the brands of clothes that they wear, the haircuts they have. Their outward appearance. If you saw a man with long, greasy hair, unshaved, lots of tattoos and lots of piercings, what would you think? We should look at people's character. It's what's inside that counts. And that goes back to uh, David when he was being picked to be king. God looks, the man looks on the outside, but God looks in the heart. Uh, and what about us? We shouldn't try to be perfect on the outside. Yeah, we all want to look our best, but it's more important uh, as what's inside. Um, I thankfully the MOTs have been postponed for a year. Are you relieved? I am so relieved. I hate <laughs> doing the MOT because I'm never too sure what's going on on the inside of car. I'm not that mechanically minded, and uh, anything that ever goes wrong is to do with what's inside the car. And I do know a guy who used to before the MOT polish his car up, make sure there's plenty of wax on his car because he said, "Listen, if I can get them to look in the outside and see it's lovely and sparkly." They'll let it pass. And of course, he's wrong because it's what's in the inside that counts in a car. And the same with us. It's what's in the inside of us that counts with uh, our relationship with God and our relationship with others. So I'm going to read the last four or five verses. Verses 8 to 12. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. 
but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Starts off, finally, I I don't know, is it just me? I always find this word very funny in sermons. Ministers stand up and they go, finally, and you think, oh, thank goodness, you're nearly over. Is that just me? I, I've known ministers like that. Oh, okay, yes. No, but I haven't got that bit yet. Do I just think that? You know, no, mm, yeah. anyway. But then they take them talking for ages, like another 20 minutes or whatever. A bit like Peter, he writes finally, and then he goes on, and there's two more chapters after that. And then there's a second Peter, so it's not really a finally. <laughs> finally doesn't mean finally. Just as an aside, I want to put this on record. I've never noticed Kenneth doing this. Kenneth, I've never noticed you saying finally and then going on. Um, I'm trying to dig myself out of a hole here. Okay, so, anyway, anyway, yeah. if we... Finally. <laughs> Finally, finally. Anyway, if we are to live a life of showing respect and consideration to others, Peter gives us five ways of doing this, of showing respect and showing consideration to other people. Peter seems to like his lists. I think Peter and I could have been best friends. I, When I get to heaven, I'm going to look up Peter and we're going to compare lists. Is that on your list for things to do in heaven? I have a list of people I want to... Really? Yeah. Well, like who? Peter. Peter's added to him. Okay. Who, who <laughs> like else? Moses and I read about Gideon. He was in, you know, and who else? Colonel Sanders. I don't know, is he in heaven? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. No, That's... people from the Bible and, and people okay. that I've known here who I know have gone there. I'm going to, you know. So mm. Peter is added to my list of people that I want okay. to check out. Noah. Imagine, like. You've read about all these people. It's like, I have no really, idea like, what you're talking about. No, people you want to see in heaven. You want to meet and sit down and have a cup of tea with. Well, will Noah just go on about sailing? Oh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, the list that came from the list. Peter likes lists. So, number one in this list is be like-minded. My version of the Bible says... Live in harmony with one another. I quite like that better than being like-minded. I don't know why they're two different, because they're both NIV. But anyway, do you ever read a bit of the Bible? Do you ever read a bit of the Bible? I do. I read, read lots of bits of the Bible. <laughs> a verse or a bit of verse just jumps out at you. No, is it just me? But, uh, but yeah, sometimes. Okay, sometimes, that's yes. I thought that was just my weird thing. So when I read this bit and I read these words, um, live in harmony with one another, they really stood out. I thought, even in lockdown, because... The four of us, plus the dog, are all shut in the house unless we take him out for a walk all day. And sometimes it's hard to live in harmony with each other. If somebody's in the kitchen and you want to do something and they're in your way and it's just it's mm-hmm. hard. I thought that was quite good. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, be sympathetic, which is self-explanatory. My dad used to say, uh, never judge a man until you walk a mile in his shoes, which is always... I suppose that's what sympathetic is, or trying to understand somebody else's point of view. Mm. Number three is love one another. Again, this explains itself. Uh, number four, be compassionate and humble. Compassionate is about showing sympathy and concern for others. And humble is not being proud or overly important for who you are. Think of one president I can think of that that doesn't apply to. Number five... Um, do not repay. No, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but repay evil with good. Verses ten and eleven. Um, I'll not read them again. I've read them before. Okay. How do we enjoy life and see good times? Here's another list for you. Here's How do we enjoy life and see good times? Number one. So from verse ten, it says, "Keep your tongue from evil. Watch what we say." Out loud, but more so nowadays, I'm probably, yeah, the same as out loud, but watch what you say online as well. Okay, number two, turn from evil, do good instead. I mean, those are very obvious things to do, but quite often we forget to do that. Turn away from what's bad and turn to what is good. But it doesn't just say turn from evil, it gives you an alternative. Turn Mm -hmm. from evil, do good. Okay, number three is seek peace and pursue it. It's quite hard doing this um, Bible class online because you can't say, I don't know what that word means. Mark explained compassionate and humble earlier on, and I don't know if everybody knows what pursue means. So pursue is 
if you go after something, like Scooby after a cat, if he saw a cat cross the road and the gate was open, he'd be away after it. You can just imagine. <laughs> Probably what we was barking at earlier on. Verse 12, this is what it reads as. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Very simply, when we put God first in our lives, remember the Ten Commandments, then God notices that. And he will listen to our prayers. There you go. That's my lead-in. That's your lead-in. We're going to pray. We are going to pray. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this part of the Bible. Thank you that you can help us understand it. That even when there's bits that we don't think apply to us, there's always something there that we can learn. Father, the bit that stood out for me was help us to live in harmony with each other. Help us to love each other. Help us to do that by, not necessarily by what we say, but by what we do. Help us to be compa kind, compassionate, humble, loving, understanding. And especially more in these days when we're all cocooned in our own wee homes, safe and sound, but away from what was life beforehand. Look after each one of us. Be with us the rest of this day. Amen. Okay, amen. Thank you very much for continuing this journey with us through First Peter. And hopefully you're getting as much out of it as we are. Uh, it's quite interesting. It really is. And you could probably delve a lot deeper into these things. Do not forget about the Zoom meeting on Tuesday, the Zoom Bible class. Get your uh, your parents' email to us so we can we send you that, that invite. We'll put that on later today. We will put that on later this day, this afternoon. Instructions how to do it. I'm sure most of you know how to do Zoom. If not, get in touch and someone uh, will let you know. So thank you very much for joining us and we will let you go and get top up your tea and put on another slice of toast before the morning service. The family service. The family service. Very much looking forward to that. And we will hopefully see you on Tuesday night. And if not that, live, live on Tuesday night. Where will we be? We will we'll be in front of the computer. <laughs> in our kitchen. Oh, we'll be in front of the computer. Don't worry about that. Uh, so thank you very much and we will see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.